We're asked to prove that this is equal to this. When you do a proof, you take the left side and you rework it until it matches the right side. That's a loose idea of what to do with the proof, okay? Um, so uh, we have two angles being added. That makes me think of the sum and difference identities of trigonometry, of sine and cosine specifically. Um, let's use alpha and beta. If you have some angle alpha plus some angle beta, whoops, then you can break it up, but it's not like the distributive property. That's what a lot of students do. It's sine of alpha, cosine of beta, multiplied together here, plus sine of beta, cosine of alpha. We can do that here. Our alpha is 60 and our beta is x. So I'm rewriting that left side. That's sine of 60, cosine of x plus sine of x, cosine of 60. And it might not look like it yet, but we are getting closer because now we don't have two angles inside the argument of, this, of the trig function. We can evaluate sine of 60. That's the same as the square root of 3 over 2. And then we can evaluate cosine of 60. That's 1 half, so I'll bring that out front since that's just constant. There's no variables there. And now just a little bit of reworking. Both these are have a divide 2 in them, so we can say that that's the same thing as the square root of 3 cosine x plus, oops, I wrote down cosine. That's sine of x up here, right? Sine of x, sine of x. So that's sine of x over here. The whole thing is being divided by 2, right? Because you could break that up as divide 2 for the first term, divide 2 for the second term, which is the same thing as what we have down here. The proof's done. We took the left side, we made it look like the right side. 